I know how powerful it was when I was in a rave when I was younger, mm. when I was absolutely off my tits, yeah. having the best time. Yeah. And the MC or the DJ made a contact or looked at me or made Boom. some sort of yeah. that like you get hype you'd feel yeah. like some sort of buzz you yeah. would um, and that is just something that I try to recreate when I'm on stage I try and look into the eyes of everybody like no matter how like mm. anxiety filled it is like just that connection people will remember it yeah. and you just you're just there to make the party even more fun. That's basically. a beautiful thing. Yeah, you're the soundtrack. I'm doing, yeah. <laughs> doing, doing doing my best. Doing great. Doing my best. Raving. Love a rave. You get any, have you got any up to any mischief? Is it, in fact, that's, this is the question. What's the most mischief you've ever got up to in a rave? Mm. Street Culture TV. Beatbox created. Killer Killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Are we ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, wicked. Yo, ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London or as central as you need to be. God, ain't that the truth. Big shout out to all the sharers and carers, people who have been clocking us from the jump, staying out of trouble. Uh, and if you're staying in trouble with the right things, you'll be checking out the 500 plus podcasts that we've got on Street Culture. No sleep, I repeat, no sleep on my repeat. House sponsors the mighty GK Nifty Heads have a massive 100,000 play to earn NFTs to give away to the streets. Just hit the link in the description or go to GK Nifty niftyheads.com and get ready for Hoddle Wars Summer 2024. Um, inside the house, we have a lady that is most definitely proficient in the skills of MCing, predominantly drum and bass, girls next door. We got Mylar Falls as well. Uh, and we got Nicky in the back. This is Maddie V. How are we? How are you doing? I'm good. good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Yeah, yeah. absolutely fine. Yeah? yeah. Where, where did you travel from? Well, I travelled from Worthing today, so, so not too bad. It's not. I used to live in Plymouth, so mm. these these journeys are easy now. You get used to. Worthing's not too bad. I've got family in Worthing, and the, the travel ain't too bad, is it? No, it's quite nice to be fair. Yeah. It's quite an easy easy journey from south. It's quick. Yeah. It's quick. You must get recognised a lot. A little, a little bit, a little bit. I do get recognised quite a bit. Yeah. But. Yeah. Yeah, I just I'm just grateful every time it happens. I'm just like, oh, another supporter. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, another friend, another fanatic. That's what we exactly. like. Exactly. But it's interesting, isn't it, the journey of the artist, and you're starting off very, very, you know, gradual in your in your comfort of your own studio or bedroom writing lyrics, and then all of a sudden, you know, the repetition of the work suddenly yields this kind of introduction of people you don't even know, and you, and yeah. it, it's obviously working. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like you just open up to a whole new family, I suppose. Like, I didn't know anything about, like, different scenes. Yeah. Like, it's sort of a thing. Like, when you're in, like, school and stuff, there's all these different areas. Mm. And then you come out and then you realise there's all these different areas still. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so, yeah, no, it was really cool to uh, know the drama bass scene and all the people involved. And the family just keeps getting bigger. So. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. And your involvement is ever increasing. You know, the girls next door. Um, project. My girls? Yeah, let's talk. Let's talk about this because you know it, we, we, there's some family friends within within this, this crew. So yeah, do give us a breakdown and how it even came about. Oh God, Girls Next Door has been a mad journey and a beautiful one as well. Um, I'm so grateful to have the girls in my life. Um, yeah, we got together up in Birmingham. Um, it was originally Miss Pink's set. Um, I think it was Made Festival. Right. And she said, listen, I think I've got an MC that's pulled out. Could you come along? I've also got a singer along with me, just just the girls, because Casey's very, like, she loves to involve everyone mm -hmm. and she's really good at that. So, um, so yeah, we just we just ran the set. Like, obviously, coming from drum and bass, I'm used to just hopping on sets and not really know what's going to happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, yeah, we ran it. We had a great time. Um, and then, you know, afterwards, we decided to do a live stream. Um, and the live stream just went phenomenally well we, we couldn't believe it to be fair yeah i saw it it's and then great. yeah just slowly kind of like yeah it was bubbling and we mm. were like should we do something mm. um and so we put it up online to see what people would say um people went mad for it so we were like let's let's do this yeah let's do this so yeah it's been very organic yeah, yeah. it was quite the phenomenal f from a, a covid point of view because there was still that live streaming aspect that people were still leaning towards right mm that kind of perpetuated the, the whole journey for you girls, didn't it? Yeah, well, I don't think it ever really went away. I think a lot of people hopped on the live streams um, during COVID 
and you know we're in a recession now not everyone's mm. got money to be going out all the time mm. Mm. like kitchen sessions are a real thing <laughs> like yeah, yeah, yeah. like all around the UK so yeah so uh, I feel like we kept a nice big online fan base from that mm. but we still we still do them every single time because it is like people have watched the journey now mm. and they'll bring up things from like last year or things that you know have happened along our journey so mm. we just know how involved people are so mm. it's good good way to keep in touch with all those people that support you as well for sure i think a lot of uh, people underestimate the journey of the artists and how much the fans want to see that massively uh this is something i'm trying to do more of is lots of just real stuff just yeah. stuff behind the scenes that you'd be doing in everyday thing because people i'll be honest i love to see that mm -hmm. like if you know if i could see like my idols just wafting around their house in the slippers like yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know yeah, what totally. i mean um but it's also about, for me personally it's quite an anxiety thing like just posting that stuff like i procrastinate a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah it's really it's really hard to get into but i think yeah People really like the behind the scenes. Miss Pink's really good. Really? Yeah, she's really good at putting all these videos together of all our like behind the scenes, goofy stuff. That's sick. <laughs> yeah. That's sick. Who uh, who out of your most favourite artists do you want to see walking around in their in their PJs or slippers with with a cup of tea and doing live streams? God, there's so many. Right. <laughs> there's so many. Uh, I mean, I I would like to see most DJs showing the you know the real side to them because I think. It's very hard for artists to create content these mm. days that's like, also like sort of promoting themselves, mm. but also trying to keep up with the trendy content and trying to get reach and all of the algorithms yeah. and things like that. So it's like, it's quite hard for artists to do that. So I think, you know, it'd be really nice to just see people showing that real side mm. of them and just, mm. just the daily stuff. And maybe even incorporate, like, just walk around your kitchen like, yes, I'm playing tonight. Yeah, <laughs> it's just yeah. so simple. It's, you don't have to come up with all these mad content ideas. It can be so easy Shop and, and silly and simple, yeah. Press so, and yeah. play and go. Yeah, exactly. And like, it's a crazy time for that. It's, you know, back in the day was the tape packs. You know, now it's I like, wasn't around. I was not around during the tape packs. It was, it was mad. The era was mad. I know. Yeah. And the vinyl. I really would have loved to see, like, the transition from the vinyl to the CDJs mm. for the DJs and on the scene, because it was probably, like, just technology mm. in, in itself just mm. coming about during that time. It must have been quite, yeah, mm. quite a magical journey of, of the for scene. Sure. What do you reckon, uh, for, for the age you are, what, 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 what do you recognise as the most prevalent thing in your journey of drum and bass so for instance if it's not vinyl tape packs mastering or whatever um what what is the most significant thing that stands out in drum and bass that you hold as you know the key of it all the the, the most standout thing networking i think networking. i would say it's all about who you know it's yeah. all about who you meet and just keeping your feet on the ground as well and mm. just realizing that you know you've come from the rave you always have come from being a raver mm. Um, and I feel, yeah, I think it's important to network with anybody, um, no matter how high up or low down they're mm. considered to be mm. in the scene or wherever. Um, and most importantly, networking with production people. Mm. Like that, I think is like a big thing. It's just getting to know those side because they honestly they they run the show yeah. big time. And yeah, you want to be friends with them. You've got quite a prolific pen, haven't you? You do a lot of you. You're <laughs> you write a lot. Yeah, uh, I don't know. It's like it's like going on the PlayStation for me. It's, it's just fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If I'm bored, yeah. that's all I want to do. Really, is whack my headphones in. Yeah, I don't know. Hip hop's got me quite a lot recently. Really? Yeah, hip hop's probably my favorite thing to write to. Mm. And then I can put that over drum and bass in like half time. So it like it's kind of killing two birds with one stone. That's sick. <laughs> yeah. I've never. Yeah, because it's just it's just tempos at the end of the day. It's just tempos, yeah. I've learned I've learned a lot of things like convert a few things convert, and then some things you got to speed up or slow down yeah. to put them across different genres. Really? Yeah, it's quite fun though. I found my favorite thing is to write over like a like a trap or a drill beat and then put that over drum and bass because it's quite skippy and fast. Yeah, yeah, because the flow's different. You hear that with some MCs that are coming through drum and bass, and a lot of that is yeah. the drill influence. Yeah, um, one example, Jay Muller. Jay Muller, yeah, you can hear it immediately. It's sick, it's really cool. And yeah, I remember hearing him do that over a beat a while ago and being like, yeah, this is, this is cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, 
It's fun. Yeah. It's, it's really fun to play around with the flows. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Sonics are everything. Like, when you, when you apply female voice to drum and bass, there's something that cuts right through. And I've noticed it distinctively, particularly with the influx of new talent that's, that's emerging. Do you, do you see the talent emerging as competitive? No. no, no, it's all about collaboration, not competition Love for it. me. Yeah, uh, exactly. It's important. I think we don't battle, we better. Yeah, exactly. Mm. But you've seen there's so many artists. You see, like, yeah, I think the whole competition and clashing things, especially for MCs, mm. there was a lot of that with the grime, and it was very hype, and mm. it was a really cool time, mm. um, and that brought a lot of attention. But I think it is just as powerful mm. when two artists that you love, especially if you don't expect them to work together, mm. you're like, oh my god, what God, have they I create? Love that. Yeah. yeah, right. Especially if they're from two different worlds. Yeah, that's what I really like. Yeah, I think it's yeah. And that doesn't happen. I don't. I don't believe it happens enough. Not for my liking anyway. I like it when people out of the blue like, well, yeah, you do what? Yeah, exactly. I love that, I love that stuff. So, what did you grow up on as, as as a youngster? What kind of music? What kind of influences? What What was your family into? What's the do you know what my? It was quite a weird upbringing for me because my mum didn't really listen to much UK music, right. uh, nor did my stepdad. But my my real dad, he showed me everything from like opera to Eric Clapton to like yeah. Cascada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, what I mean, he showed he. I really connected with my dad from music, wow. which is why I like doing like the Raver Tots and stuff because mm -hmm. seeing them all connect to their parents for music yeah. is amazing. But they had a very like. My mum was Dido, mm -hmm. sort of Anastasia, Christina. My stepdad was like Wu-Tang and Eminem. And then my dad was all over. But I found, because obviously I grew up with the internet, I grew up on a lot of American, mm. really, really rubbish music. Now I list back, I'm just like, <laughs> it's not that great. No, I know, but when you're that age. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, when you're that age. But yeah, it was a lot of American stuff. I mm. grew up a lot on Nicki Minaj. Mm. She was I like, love Nicki Minaj. I don't know. I I think she's incredible. Yeah. That's her. a moment for life, that tune. Is it? Yes. Crazy. And Monster. The verse on Monster? Forget it. Right. So the Kanye tune. She, oh. she really, like, yeah, she inspired me a lot, I think. She was the reason that I wanted to be a, a, a rapper. <laughs> now you come to mention it because you do work with your, your vocal, vocals in a particular way. Like with Nikki, she had this way of, Going low, going high, changing of boom, boom, boom. You know, she was she was off the wall. She was, yeah, still is. You know, it's like different personalities coming out of her. Yeah. And yeah, it was cool to watch that and um, uh, Hopsin. Hopsin, Hops yeah, Hopsin, massive wow. fan of Hopsin. Like that's an underrated MC. Oh, uh, extremely underrated. I had a mini conversation with him actually on Instagram about orchestras, and I was like, this is so cool. Stop it. <laughs> yeah, I know. But honestly, his, I. I'm massively inspired by his string of Ill Mind mm. on YouTube. Yes, huge. Incredible, yeah. which is what, something that I kind of want to do. I want, I'm going to take all my YouTube stuff off and start on the YouTube with the the high-end sort of mm. visual sort of things because it's so powerful. But, yeah, hops in. Yeah, all day. How much How much research do you actually put into the MCing? Uh, that, you know, because you've got to let the well fill of ideas, right? Like, do, you, do you do a lot of R&D? I've never done any research. No? This is I've probably should, and I'm still finding out things about the German bass scene that I because I knew absolutely zilch when I came in, like to the scene. I knew any, nothing about. Do you know what I thought a DJ and MC? They they planned it, and that the nights where the yeah. MCs jump on. I didn't think that everything. I thought it was all planned yeah, to yeah, a yeah, T. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you can imagine me coming up like oh, I'm ready. Let's plan this, and it's like <laughs> oh, it's so spontaneous, and I'm like. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? I've got 40 seconds worth of bars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was about it. That was at the start. But this is the mystique of drum and bass, isn't it? It's this, this kind of, this this ever presence in UK culture, but moreover, it's this, how do they get everything so calculated? The, from the double drops to the MC knowing when he's going to do, she's going to do something. That's like, <laughs> how? It's, it. Blew my mind to start with that it's quite a spontaneous thing, like especially because it is a it's a if you've got just a full drum and bass yeah. set, it's a BPM. Yeah. So I don't know. After a while, I realised that you could sort of whatever sort of lyrics that you had in your head, you could mm. sort of you've got to work with the music. Mm. It's like a very spontaneous, mm. like on your feet sort of thing. Um, but I think it's been incredibly more powerful, like especially with my girls next door, mm. to sit down. 
and plan it. I mean, I, I, lo I love the spontaneous stuff, but the sitting down and planning it. It's the best. It makes the set so much more tighter. Yeah. And like, you know, there's t I, me I mess up on set all the time. If I don't know the set, I'm probably yeah. going to mess up. Yeah. You won't know, but I will really? mess up. <laughs> yeah. Style in, see? Yeah. Professionalism. Uh, yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> I feel like the more you can get deeper into your craft, you know, really hone in what it is, that you're giving the ultimate experience to you the people that are supporting coming to watch, right? Yeah, well, I'm dead to create the atmosphere or, or try yeah. and, uh, like, you know, complement the atmosphere. Mm. That's what I mean. I'm there to complement the DJ. It's all about us as mm. a collective, not me on stage. Mm. The stage is for sharing. Mm. Like, it, yeah, it's all about... I know how powerful it was when I was in a rave when I was younger, mm. when I was absolutely off my tits, yeah. having the best time, Yeah. and the MC or the DJ made a contact or looked at me or made mm. some sort of... Yeah. That... Like, you'd get hype. You'd feel yeah. like some sort of buzz. You yeah. would. Um, and that is just something that I try to recreate when I'm on stage. I'll try and look into the eyes of everybody. Like, no matter how, like, mm. anxiety filled it is, like, just that connection, people will remember it. Yeah. And you're just, you're just there to make the party even more fun. That's basically. a beautiful thing. Yeah, you're the soundtrack. <gasps> I'm doing my best. Yeah. <laughs> doing great, Doing girl. my best. Um, repurposing what you do on stage onto record... Uh, that's that's obviously there's a stark difference from doing it in a rave, massive, to then trying to keep that same energy on on a record. I go through it with beatboxing. It's like trying to reinvent the wheel here. What they see on stage to what actually goes on the record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a tough one, so isn't it? So you know, how do, <laughs> how do you combat that? Not that you're only doing drum and bass, but you know what I'm saying. I'm still learning, I think, when it comes to the whole recording side of things. Like your recording voice is completely different to your stage voice. Mm. And I've, over the how many of years I've done this, I've like crafted my voice over that stage thing. Mm. So then to go into recording from that, I've had, it's been hard work to mm. like try and be like, I'm like, well, that sounds good on the stage, but it doesn't sound yeah. good in the studio. Um, and it's been a hard thing, because you know, a lot of artists go from the other way around, they go from the recording and then yeah. it's the other way around. So I don't know, I'm still finding my feet with it, but I think I'm getting there. It just takes practice, doesn't it? It does take time, doesn't it? Mm. Because what you're doing is you're finding your own, your sound. And that's that's the most important thing. And it doesn't always translate on to a live sound system anyway. Do you know what I mean? It's a tough one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And like you were saying, with like, I'll change around my voice a little bit with the pitches and the mm. sound or if it's like, I, yeah, I can do a lot of my voice. So it's like hard to like, pick what I want to do yeah, sometimes yeah. and stick to it. <laughs> oh, story of my life. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, we've all been there. I think, that, you know, the world's your oyster when you get into the studio and that's the whole point. You know, you, you've got so much dy dynamism in your voice anyway, so it's always a good look that if you hone it in a little bit, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Um, raving. Love a rave. Did you get any, have you got any up to any mischief? Is it, in fact, that's, this is the question. What's the most mischief you've ever got up to in a rave? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> My mum just like, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good. Come, no come, come. Do you know what? I can keep it light. Yeah. Um, my favourite raves in particular, and I don't think everyone in the sort of UK rave scene have actually been to them, but I like, I'm a big fan of free parties yeah i love hell yeah love a free party but there's different types all over the uk and there's like london you have like squat parties but bristol obviously was one of my favorite bristol sort of southwest area and ea to be fair they do like party free parties in the forest sick and they have like three or four rigs sometimes like showing up and they've got what? these these big rigs and you wait until 11 o'clock and you get the number, you call the line, and they give you directions. And, like, all these people from all over the country will be driving, like, to this party. There'll be a few sometimes, depending where you are in the country. But I think, for me, it's that it's that excitement, or if it's a whole night and possibly half of the next day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and it is, it's an adventure. It's mm. a proper adventure. Um, yeah, I've had to dodge police and everything yeah, <laughs> to yeah. get to a party. Like but. Damn criminal justice bill. Like they must get, <laughs> they must lock it off pretty soon as soon as, it, as soon as they see it. Do you know what? It's all um it all depends really where it is. Yeah. Um they do lock them off pretty quickly, but you know, if you're going to an illegal party, you're not exactly gonna be opposed to jumping through a couple of bushes to get to the party. Yeah, 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 you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? So there's always sort of I've oh, I've never like not got to the party. Mm. I've had some obstacles. <laughs> I've had to like <laughs> 
Well, there was so gladiator shit. <laughs> <laughs> there was like a wall of police, and I was like, "Excuse me," <laughs> just walked past. Stop it. Yeah, well, they can't they can't touch you or anything, no. so they're just they're just there trying to do their job, which I can completely appreciate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so I've had some really really fun parties that I think. For me, it's just about the journey and the the people that you're with, especially. Mm, like, mm. yeah, I love a forest party. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Favourite DJ you've ever worked with? Oh, it's hard. Oh, it's, it's political, this one. Do you know what? It's, it's probably Mandy Dextrous. Yeah, um, nice. But I've obviously, I love my Girls Next Door. Like, Miss Pink isn't... Yeah. Like, the stuff that she does and the transitions that she does through Girls Next Door. Like, sick, yeah. How we swap from the sort of 140 to the drum and bass. It's been really impressive to see her do that. And mm. then Mandy Dextrous's production mm. is top. Next. And I really want to see her on more big Hell drum and bass yeah. things. Like, I know that she mixes it up in a set, but I'm like, that's what it needs, is yeah, we yeah, need yeah. a little bit of a mix. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's so important, isn't it? D- d- especially when you're doing those bigger, um, you know, festivals or like Raver Tots or something like that. You want to kind of create a broad dynamic, don't you? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I love the Rover Tots. I love seeing all the... the I've never yeah. been. I've, oh, never been I've, I've seen them. I've seen them on, online. I wish I had that when I was a kid. Not that I, I don't think my mum would have taken me to one. But, <laughs> they, yeah, it's uh, it's really cool. Um, they've all got so much energy. Yeah, born into the game, straight away. <laughs> they Straight away. The future of Rovers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right in front of you. That Actually, that is something special, isn't it? Well, it's, do you know what's really um, important is that connection to kids because these kids are going to be the ones in the playground talking yeah. about what they've done at the weekend. You know, these kids are going to be the ones that grow up and are like, right, I want to go see these artists. And, yeah. like, you know, it's really important to have that connection. Like, obviously, like, I love my River Tots and obviously I do, like, adult, yeah. obviously, normal raves as yeah. well. So I Adult like, raves. Adult <laughs> raves. <laughs> no, um, but obviously all the swearing mm. is like completely, everything's all completely censored in there, which is completely fair enough. I, yeah. yeah. I see a kid and I'm like, I don't want to Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now that would be my Achilles heel, the, the idea of not swearing, you know. I have to get my head in the game when I'm there. I'm like, right, don't swear. Yeah. Don't swear. <laughs> yeah. Be nice. Even yeah. though I'll be having conversations in the back and it'll just, I'm, I'm really bad for it. I'm trying to get better, but I'm really bad for swearing. Really? I don't know what it is. I think it was more of a rebellious thing. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. I got my dad to finally swear at the rave the other week. So. Really? Yeah. He never, he's, he was always the one that was like, don't swear, don't swear. And finally, I got the whole crowd to turn around and give him a little wave. And he put his middle finger up at me. <gasps> never seen him do anything wow. like that in my life. No. That's, yeah. that's liberation. It was good. I was like, yeah. Finally, yeah. yes, Dad. Power to the pops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 That's a lot so of love. That's so funny. So what, your family come to the rave? Um, yeah, my mum, my mum's very busy and my little sister's only just gotten old enough to leave now, so um, hopefully she'll come along. But um, they're all down in Cornwall, so it's quite hard for them. Yeah, you're Cornwall originally, right? Yeah, Cornwall what about? originally. Uh, Cornwall, originally from like Liscard Lou area. Okay. Um, but oh, I'll be honest, I feel like I'm meant to be from Plymouth. Yeah, yeah. Plymouth is where I lived and where I found all my friends and just kind of found myself as well, really. Dance Academy, big up Plymouth. Do you know what? I'm so gutted I wasn't there yeah. during that time. The Dance Academy and Millennium, they're, yeah, they're right. crumbling now, yeah. they're just falling apart. Yeah. But yeah, that was a crazy era. I was born too late. Yeah, you were born too late. <laughs> um, I've got family in, in Devon and those sides as well so it's a very different kind of living compared to this side of of england isn't it it's a lot slower it's a lot slower ain't it it's a lot slower but the big the raves are there the raves are there do you know what plymouth has definitely died down i think the southwest has definitely died down there are a lot of really good free parties down there. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, there's lots of good free Even parties. Even the free party thing, see? You say. <laughs> yeah, Southwest does it mm, best. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, in terms of, I'll be honest, Plymouth, they had the hub and factory when I was raving. Mm-hmm. The hub and factory were good. I actually worked at the hub for a little bit. Um, and then after COVID, all those venues really went down. And mm. they've got the depot there now. Um, ah, shout out to those boys because they've kept time. the nightlife mm. alive down there, definitely. So Wicked. Yeah. Plymouth, shout out Plymouth. Yeah, big up Plymouth, <laughs> big up the Plymouth crew, you know, yeah, we are. The um, Muff Town. <laughs> yeah, come on, send it up, tell them, tell a friend, tell a friend. What's the future, my dear? A future, uh, ah. Yeah. What's a future with Maddie V, what is it? High-end production shows nice. with lots of fire and theatrics and wow. things like that. And dancing, yeah, that's, that's the plan, is I want to, because I'm, Slowly, like I have been for ages, but slowly I'm getting together enough tracks for an album, which will still probably be a year or so yet, I reckon. 
Um, but I'm slowly trying to get an album together so that I can then take tour that album and take it round to different um, uh, different venues. One I've got my eye on the most is Electric Brixton because I think that's just yes. such an incredible space. Hell yeah! Really cool space, and I'm just I'm a bit of a pyromaniac, so I love fire. Yeah. <laughs> so I absolutely, I want pyrotechnics. There in we go. See, you know you're in trouble. You know what I mean, don't give any matches to Maddie. Exactly. Maddie. So that's the plan. Brilliant. I'm looking forward to it. Been eyeing up your Vivian Westwood necklace as well. Aww. See styles for miles around here, yeah, huh? I do, okay. Yeah. Glad <laughs> to be in the place. Thank you so much for joining us, my darling. Thank you so much, Wicked. Killer. Wicked. It's been sick. Love. And on to the next. Yeah, Killer Keller podcast. That like was out of fashion. Serves you all right. Sharing is caring. Remember, tell a friend to tell a friend. All right. Crime don't pay, but neither do they. You stay lucky. <laughs> don't talk to anyone. I wouldn't. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> Love. Yeah, that was great fun.